Hi guys! I'm Madeline Harvey and thank you so much for hanging out with me today. We're going to talk about some ways that you can instantly improve the quality of your voice. We're going to dive into vowels. Why are they so important in singing? What exactly do they do for your voice? And how can you use vowels as a way of sounding more professional? So if you like today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up or click that subscribe button below. I would love to see you here more often. The video that you're about to watch was taken as a clip from a live voice lesson that was shot earlier today. If you'd like to watch the entire live and participate in the multiple exercises included in the live, then I invite you to click that join button below and become a member of this channel. As a member, you'll have exclusive access to all of our live voice lessons that we do every Monday and Thursday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. So again, just click that join button below, become a member. It's only $4.99 a month and your contribution helps to support our channel. That way we can continue to deliver awesome content for you. You ready to get started? Here we go. Happy Thursday. I hope you're having a wonderful week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Camille, I see this is my first live lesson. So excited. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for hanging out with me. If you are new as a new member, we do these lives every Monday and Thursday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. So really grateful to have you join us. Hi, my so-called live. Happy Thursday. So we're gonna, we're really gonna dig into something that you can do that will instantly improve the quality of your voice. So if you find yourself like, oh, Diana, newbie here, thanks for, oh, thank you, thank you so much. Hello, everyone. I'm so, I'm easily distracted. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, so if you've ever found yourself listening to some of your favorite artists, and then trying to sing along with them and just observing that there's a variance between your voice and their voice and you're just kind of wondering, huh? <laughs> How can I make my tone sound similar to theirs? Because unfortunately we can't carbon copy our voices to sound exactly like someone else. Our voice is like a fingerprint. It's completely unique to us. And I think that's really cool. But what are they doing that makes them sound so good? Well, it's really, it comes down to a couple things, but we can narrow it down to one word and that's vowels. So we're going to play with our vowels today, but it's not so much just vowels. It's what exactly do the vowels give the voice? So that's something that we're going to target in. We're going to really hone in on what vowels do for the voice. Why have they been so important to creating beautiful tone? So there, <laughs> there we have it. So what is it that vowels do for the voice? Well, they create a specific, let's call it backspace, a specific configuration of shape for the air to glide up through the body, through the, through the neck and into the channel resonators. I want you to meditate on a trumpet. That's, that's ideally, that's what we're going for. So we're creating a trumpet like space, a nice narrowed back of the throat, and then a gradual opening for the space, like there's a gradual widening for the trumpet into the face. That's our meditation for today. And that's what we're going to try to emulate in the way that we produce vowels. Because I've, I've seen it so much in private lessons and also in singers that just get frustrated with their singing. There's 
a sense of chasing their tail. Like, what more can I do to create a nice, warm, elegant, polished, professional sound? And it really comes down to that back space. We can create a lot of beautiful sound when we come into that back space. Now, this can also be seen as the same thing as tonal center. I'm a really big fan of calling it tonal center because there's a specificity about the shape. So if we say a vowel scale now in our normal accent, whatever that may be, I want you to say A, like the vowel A, A, and just notice how you create that A, 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 A. In my voice, there's a widening, A, A, widening. Now, E, 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 E. Now, pay special attention. I know we're just making a vowel sound, but pay special attention to what you notice is going on in the back there. Are you going E, E, E? So if we were to try that E on a high note, we would go E, E, E. Right? You see how that gets us into trouble? So we want to pay special attention to what we're doing currently. E, E, I, 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 I. Good. One more time. I, I, O, O, O. One more time. O, and you. You. You, instead of ooh, ooh, you, you. Now, one thing you might have noticed, now you might have, it depends on your regionalism and the language that you speak, but you might have noticed that as you created those vowels, they might have all been created in the same place. That's our objective. That's what we want to look for. But I can see, too, how it would be confusing if they weren't. Like, for example, the accent here, there's a, there's a variety of different accents in, in Tennessee and Kentucky, where I'm from originally. So sometimes you get this melodic like, ha, ha, ha. And sometimes you'd get this gruffer, ha, ha. But you see how the I is up, ha. Ha, ha. Now, what we want to do in singing is we want to imagine that all of our vowels are being created in the very, 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 very back of the tongue. This is where we're going to spend the bulk of our attention today, the very back of the tongue. So I'd like for you to just rest your teeth and gently smile, smile for me. Mm -hmm. Now pay attention to the tip of your tongue, just gently touching the back of your bottom teeth. Mm -hmm. Now from here, yawn. <sighs> Can you feel that widening happening back there? <sighs> Feels nice. Yes, this is what our vowels will feel like. Notice how when you yawn, the very back of your tongue gets a little depressed, not sad but it flattens out a little bit. Now we're exaggerating this a little bit, but that's also going to be part and parcel for what we're going to do today. We're going to exaggerate a lot of these feelings so that you can feel them. So do you feel the back of your tongue flattening out, getting a little flat? And do you feel maybe your soft palate lifting, creating a nice wide open space even though we're not opening the mouth. Uh -huh. Good. Now let's try this one more time. Gently stretch and let's hold it for a count of five. Ready? And. One more time. Good, good. Now what we're doing is we're gently stretching those muscles as they will create sound 
whatever vowel sound that we work with, but we're also holding them open so that we don't get a beautiful onset and then quickly relax and then we lose our tonality. So let's try that one more time. Stack your teeth, smile, gently yawn. See how that feels? It's a little weird. I know, I know. But you can feel that the back of your tongue is flattening. The back of the throat is kind of scooching back and creating a little bit of an arc. That's what that yawn is. And then the soft palate is lifting. That immediately creates beautiful tone. Beautiful tone. Now, again, we are going to over exaggerate it today. But that, that gives us a start place. I see, this, I see this so often in singers that they'll begin with that really nice open space, but the muscles quickly relax and they lose control over it over the course of an entire song. So it's really important for us to be very specific about this sensation so that way we can feel that that's required. Now, we haven't even mentioned vowels. We just stretched. So now I want you to try to put some sound to it. And I just want you to see what vowel it does. Like if you stretch, what vowel does that do? Let's give it a try. Now, I'm not going to give you a specific pitch. I want you to find the one that feels really good for your voice. But let's slide down. Stack the teeth. Yawn. Good. Decent. What vowel is that? I'll wait. <laughs> it's like an E vowel, isn't it? It's E. So if we were doing classical voice, bella canto style of singing, the mother vowel, meaning the vowel by which every other vowel springs forth, is E. But it's not E where you deploy a lot of tongue tension. It's e, like that. So I know that it's going to feel really kind of Pee Wee Herman like, especially as we get accustomed to depressing gently the back of that tongue. But I want, I want to encourage you to just go ahead and embrace it. Because you're not only are you going to be able to isolate what that feels like, but you've got to be able to hold it which is all sorts of weird and challenging. But here we go. We're just going to slide down. Everybody hear the piano OK? Mm -hmm. OK, so we're going to not worry so much about the pitch, although that's just a frame of reference. We're going to smile and then slide on an E. Feel the back of that tongue. E And just keep it, the back of the tongue, I mean, nice and depressed. That's your objective. Keep the, uh, yeah, and keep the back of the tongue nice and depressed. Let's give it a go. I feel it. Fantastic. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I know this is really weird. Ooh, it's very, very strange. But let's give that D another try. Feel that trumpet. You've created a nice narrow space by which, especially with the mouth being lit as it is, for the air to come up through the head and mm, into the face. Feel that gentle stretch.
Now keep that stretch nice and consistent. If your voice goes, what does that mean, you think? What did you hear in my voice? I'll do it again. I'm a little sharp. Can you hear how I fell right out of that, right out of that configuration? I went, and, it, and then, and I relaxed too much out of that configuration and the sound wobbled. So be sure to feel it. It almost feels a little bit like a gag. Back with depression of the tongue. certain pitches and it's something that we really have to negotiate with we got to negotiate a couple things if your voice wobbles like mine just did could be that you're relaxing out of the configuration or it could be that your air pressure dropped now I'm gonna go ahead and tell on myself because I'm still recovering from this blasted cold so I am having difficulty producing some adequate pressure in my lungs so that's what caused that wobble that, that you just saw. So if that's, sometimes you ask yourself, which one am I doing? Did I relax out of the configuration? Or did my breath become uneven? So let's just do a couple more. Hear how that goes right up into a beautifully rounded head voice. How to avoid jaw tension in this. Just don't hold your jaw so steady. Don't hold your jaw. If you're going with your jaw, it's more in the tongue. It's more in the tongue. And it's a gentle, gentle yawn. So your jaw should be relatively relaxed. Try this one more time. Good, good. So right away, we're, we're, we're understanding what that configuration is. We, we kind of feel that even though it's kind of a nebulous sounding E sound, it's not a crisp cutting E, it's just sort of a tonal blob <laughs> that sounds kind of classical in nature. If you're planning on singing in pop music, I still want you to work with this. Because what we're looking for is even though there's subtle variation, that's the thing that separates um, classical from contemporary. They're only different in degrees, just slight degrees. So even though we're getting kind of a classical sound right now, what we're practicing is the foundation of that configuration, that trumpet space. So until you can handle it, completely clear and easily in the classical, then you can modify it ever so slightly when you sing contemporary music. Contemporary music. These vowel shapes are only different by degrees. It's not a completely different thing. So let's try a couple more. Feel the yawn in the tongue. It might help if you think gag. Can you hear how that depressing of the tongue creates that beautiful air release into the head. Good. 
Good, good, good. Very good. One more. pressure today. <laughs> Sorry guys. Good. Good. Very good. Can you feel that? This is a solid way to introduce vowel shapes by introducing the mother shape, that classical E. We limit the amount of air pressure by eliminating our mouth. That's gonna help us negotiate. If we try to manage vowels and we just ah, a, e, o, u, we're going to lose it, completely lose it because our trap is flapping. <laughs> it's too big, too big of a space. And what we're looking to, to create is that trumpet configuration where we can manage a consistent amount of space and consistent amount of pressure. And we want this, this gaggy feeling to be the default. Even if we're going, ha, ah, ah, it's still back there. Ha, ah, still back there. I'm not going, ah, but that's how you have to introduce this. Very, it's really weird. It's a really weird, but what we're looking at is we're just looking at that sensation. So let's go back. Let's go back to our mm, stack of the teeth. Now we know that mother vowel is E because that's what happens when we just uh, Good. Now what we're going to do is a vowel scale from here. So we're going to say ah, a, e, o, u. Okay. Now the mouth is closed, but we can still maneuver the, the depression of the back of the tongue and the opening of the back of the throat. You'll feel a slight scooch back of the throat. 